Following Homer Simpson's terrible exercise advice, like jerk that lower back and force it, works as well as following some random influencer who learned from that mecca of pseudoscience TikTok rather than actual physiology and biomechanics. You know what else doesn't work? Trying to get fit by lifting weights without a structured plan. Here's a pop quiz. How many hours should you give a muscle group to recover after a workout? 24 or 48? Answer in the comments and keep listening to learn the answer. Hi, I'm Dr. Jake, providing you with resistance training guidelines to help you stay on track and maximize benefits. Resistance training isn't guesswork. There are clear research-based guidelines on how often to train, how hard to push, how to progress, and what kind of movements matter most. When you follow these principles consistently, whether at the gym or at home, you unlock the strength, muscle, and health benefits that so many people miss. First, let's talk about why resistance training matters. Decades of research published in peer-reviewed journals shows that resistance training improves nearly every system of the body. Of course, it increases strength, builds muscle, but it also raises bone density, improves insulin sensitivity, reduces resting blood pressure, and improves markers of metabolic health. And for older adults, it may be one of the most important tools for maintaining balance, mobility, and independence. What's encouraging is that these benefits can come without special equipment. Your muscles respond to tension, fatigue, and progressive overload, which can come from body weight, bands, a loaded backpack, dumbbells, machines, or even your stairs. If it challenges your muscles, it counts. Before we look at sets, reps, and weekly schedules, it helps to understand the foundation of a good program, which is movement patterns. Every effective resistance routine, regardless of equipment, can be built from five key movements. One, bend and lift with bodyweight squats and barbell squats. Two, single leg exercises like lunge and single leg squats. Three, push exercises like push-ups, chest press, and shoulder press. Four, pulls like rows, pull-ups, and band pulls. And five, rotational, anti-rotational. With Russian twists, bicycle kicks, planks, and bird dogs, for example. Every effective program, whether at home or in the gym, comes from these five. And you can add others like hinge movements and split stance if you like. And if you don't know what all those are, don't worry. Check out my PDF document in the comments, or you can just look them up. If your routine hits all five movement patterns two to three times per week, you're locked into the proven functional structure for building muscular strength, power and endurance. Okay, now let's get into some of the specifics. First, frequency. It's recommended to train each major muscle group two to three times per week. Full body routines performed three days a week were great for beginners and busy adults. Next, intensity, which is where many people struggle. Instead of guessing, you can use reps in reserve. A simple guideline that suggests most of your sets should end with only one to three repetitions left before failure. This corresponds to an effort level where the last few reps feel challenging but still controlled. You can also use rating of perceived exertion, aiming for sets that feel like a 7 to 9 out of 10 in effort. And the 2 for 2 rule offers a simple progression strategy. If you can perform two more repetitions than planned for two consecutive workouts, it's time to increase the resistance, whether that means more weight, a harder variation, or a slower tempo. Next, volume, or the total number of sets, is equally important. Most adults see excellent results with two to four sets per exercise. And beginners can start with a single set and still see meaningful gains. Lastly, rest periods, which depends on your goals. But most adults benefit the most from two to three minutes between heavy sets and one to two minutes between moderate sets. Even if you're training at home with body weight, resist the urge to rush. Because if you're training close to failure, your muscles still need time to recover between efforts. To summarize, train each major muscle group two to three times per week, or full body sessions three times a week works for most adults. And remember, consistency, not complexity, is key. For intensity, go to one to three reps left in reserve, or an RPE of seven to nine. And if you can perform two extra reps for two sessions, increase the intensity by two to 10%. And that increase can come with more resistance, slower tempo, or harder variations. Most adults benefit from two to four sets per exercise, but beginners can make progress with even less. Mastering technique takes priority over higher volumes. As for rest between sets, for strength, two to three minutes, hypertrophy, one to two minutes, and endurance, less than 90 seconds. Just don't rush the rest. If you like what you've heard, click like and subscribe and keep listening for more. Let's talk progression, which is at the heart of resistance training. Without it, your body stops adapting and stops improving. The simplest form called linear progression involves gradually increasing the resistance over time, perhaps by performing additional repetitions, adding small amounts of weight, or moving to a slightly harder variation. For example, going from knee push-ups to elevated push-ups to standard push-ups, then to slow push-ups, feet elevated push-ups, close grip push-ups, and then diamond push-ups. Each variation increases the load so your muscles can further adapt and grow. 
As you become more experienced, you can try undulating progression. This means your training days vary in difficulty throughout the week. For example, one day may emphasize heavier, slower lifts, while another focuses on more moderate loads or faster, more explosive movements. These variations challenge your muscles in different ways and help prevent plateaus. If you're training at home, progression might mean moving from an air squat to a split squat or from basic planks to weighted versions. You know, like a plate, a weighted vest, or a grandkid. The principle is always the same. When something becomes easy, make it harder. Here's a summary of the common options. Linear progression. Add small increases week to week, a 2 to 5% greater load, or a harder variation. This option is perfect for beginners. 2. Undulating progression. Change loads or reps throughout the week, which could include a heavy day, moderate day, light or speed day. This is excellent for intermediates. And 3. Practical home progression. I already mentioned the progression with push-ups, but you can do the same with squats, rows, or just about anything. Basically, if the movement gets easier, make it more challenging. You might be wondering, well, what can I expect and how soon? Understanding what to expect can help keep people motivated. During the first few weeks, most of the strength improvements come from the nervous system. Your brain becomes better at recruiting more muscle fibers, coordinating movements, and reducing unnecessary tension. Strength quickly increases in this phase, even before visible changes to the muscle. It's after about three to six weeks when hypertrophy or an increase in muscle size begins. Muscle fibers start to grow, connective tissue becomes stronger, and tendons begin to adapt to repeated loading. By six to 12 weeks, many people notice visible changes to muscle size, firmer muscles, improved posture, and easier performance of everyday tasks. Over the months that follow, the deeper adaptations occur. Bone density begins to rise, especially in the spine and hips. Tendons stiffen and become more resilient, which means fewer injuries. Metabolic health improves with better blood sugar control and less visceral fat, even if body weight stays the same. And these benefits continue as long as you train consistently and progressively. Here's a visual of what you can expect, also included in the PDF file in the comments. Weeks 1 to 3, neural adaptations, better motor unit recruitment, faster nerve firing, 10 to 30% strength gains before muscle hypertrophy. Weeks 3 to 6, early hypertrophy and tendon adaptations. Weeks 6 to 12, visible muscle changes, stronger bones and connective tissue, and noticeable daily life strength improvements. And months 3 to 6 and beyond, significant increases in muscular power, stability, and metabolic health and reduce visceral fat without weight loss. Remember, you're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. Remember, these things happen with barbells or body weight, as long as there's progressive overload in whatever form. While overload is important, you can't overlook the importance of recovery. Too many people don't appreciate the results depend more on recovery than training perfection. Adults who train two to three times per week should allow four to eight hours between sessions for the same muscle group. Sleep plays a major role. Seven to nine hours of sleep per night supports muscle repair, hormone regulation, and strength gains. Nutrition matters as well, particularly adequate protein intake. For most adults, 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day will maximize muscle protein synthesis. When recovery is poor, whether due to insufficient sleep, inadequate nutrition, or non-stop training, the body adapts more slowly and fatigue accumulates. Remember, muscles grow during recovery, not training. So those 48 hours between sessions per muscle group is critical. Let's talk safety. In resistance training, it comes largely from controlled deliberate movements. Focus on maintaining good form and full range of motion, rather than trying to lift the heaviest possible amount. Poor form may feel good at the time, but it won't maximize gains. And gradual progression is also protective. Large jumps in resistance or sudden increases in volume tend to lead to problems, like overtraining, soreness, and injuries, rather than strength gains. Many beginners make the mistake of jumping into complex routines or choosing workouts randomly from social media. Others train too frequently without allowing time for recovery or focus mostly on the exercises they enjoy while neglecting some of the five key movement patterns. The people who improve the most are the ones that do simple, repeatable routines and follow them consistently. Some safety essentials are use controlled tempo, use full range of motion, progress slowly, avoid maximal attempts early, and prioritize technique before load. Some common beginner mistakes, lifting too heavy too soon, doing random influencer workouts, skipping legs, no progression strategy, poor sleep and or nutrition, training too many days without recovery, and focusing on too many exercises rather than five patterns. Here's some quick advice if you train at home. 
Even a simple setup can take you a long way. You can build an extremely effective resistance training program with the following. A set of resistance bands, a steady chair, a step box, or a backpack full of weight are enough to create hundreds of variations. These tools allow you to load all five movement patterns in ways that challenge your muscles just as effectively as many pieces of gym equipment. The good news is you can get effective resistance training tools for under $50. There's one last thing worth noting. One of the limitations of these guidelines is that most of the research is done on male participants. A 2023 study found that about 70% of the data informing the guidelines for resistance training comes from male populations. As a result, important sex-specific considerations, such as hormonal fluctuations, fatigue patterns, tendon properties, and the effects of perimenopause and menopause are not fully integrated into the guidelines. The existing recommendations still work pretty well for women, but they highlight the need of more inclusive research moving forward. But it's safe to say, based on the science-based guidelines we have today, no matter where you train, in your living room, a commercial gym, the great outdoors, the principles of resistance training are the same and well-founded. Train the five major movement patterns, challenge yourself with meaningful effort, progress gradually, recover well, and stay consistent. Do that week after week, and your body will reward you with greater strength, stability, and long-term health. Watch for my next video on resistance training and performance. Like, subscribe, and keep on lifting not just weights, but fact-based evidence. Thanks for watching. And as always, my answers come from peer-reviewed research.